We are live, I believe. Yes, it says it says meeting is now live <laughs> on YouTube. Okay, perfect, cool. So that, that is cool. Firstly, I'm just going to like really quickly just change this metadata. So if you are watching this right now, it's because there was a little bit of a problem of getting the stream live initially. So we're streaming it directly through Zoom. So we're using Zoom now, like everyone else in the world has suddenly picked up and started <laughs> using Zoom. That's what we're doing right now. And I'm going to be chatting with Jordan Tuali. While I'm just yeah. updating the live stream, Jordan, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit? Hey everyone, my name is Jordan Tuali and I am a 26 year old travel creative from Australia. I do a whole bunch of things, kind of like Jordan, travel the world, vlogs, videos, um, travel content, photos, that sort of thing. And I've been doing it for the last five years. I started in 2015. Well, I started traveling in 2015. I've probably been doing this career path for the last like maybe two and a half, three, but yeah five years in and taking a bit of a break because the world's taking a bit of a break. So <laughs> currently at home in Newcastle, Australia, New South Wales, Australia with my family, which is always nice. It's always nice. Once you're always on the road for 10, 11 months of the year, it is nice to be at home with your family, even if you fight. <laughs> Yeah, definitely, man. I, I said like recently for myself, I'm grateful to be back here and be with family anyway, even if like, uh, you know, we would normally be traveling and be somewhere else right now it is like it kind of for the first couple of weeks, even though the world was on fire, it did feel a bit like Christmas, if you know what I mean? Like yeah. Everyone around. Yeah. It is weird. It's been a really weird year in Australia here, especially because the world was on fire. Like, yeah. January in Australia was just like I was breathing in ash basically the whole month. And then February was like starting to get a little bit better. And then March hit with the pandemic. And now it's just like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, like, well, because I know you before and we went on a couple of trips together. And like, you have been doing Instagram as your main thing for like a, a few years. And then YouTube as well, you'd say, right? Yeah. So, Instagram started 2016. 16 started building it up probably 2017 started really like working with um tourism boards and brands and monetizing it and then youtube was more started 2018 moving to 2019 so last two years right yeah and just as a brief sort of like overview i know we're going to get into tiktok on this but how would you monetize and how do you travel through instagram um, mainly through sponsored content, through tourism boards or different regions will invite me, um, travel, travel companies that could be, um, flights or like airlines or travel tour groups. Um, yeah. And then other brands, clothing brands, headphones, random sort of like whatever brand really wants to reach out and think that their content is suited towards me and content that I think or brand products that I think will work for me and for them. And I, yeah, we just established a few relationships with different things like that and <laughs> take photos. Pretty cool. Some, some of the photos don't get seen. Some of the photos do get seen. So it's all, yeah. Sometimes, sometimes they just want a whole bunch of stuff for their website, nothing to do with your social media. And sometimes they want only social media and they don't care about other content. So it's all over the place, but it's all just to do with that travel realm. Mm -hmm. no, that's cool and like um initially i was just thinking actually how i originally found you and i think it was because i was in philippines at the time and i was looking for instagram and uh, looking at the different people that were posting things in quran and you were just posting something from our nido or something and you were like a week behind me and oh, unfortunately nice. <laughs> we never even got to meet then but i was like hey another guy on instagram that's called jordan cool <laughs> I know that's so good. I know there's a few of us in the travel. In it's weird. The travel industry is crazy weird because, like, you can have the the A class travel influencers, the ones with the millions, and then you can have the ones with like ten, twenty thousand, not very big, but everyone knows each other. Like, it's a very mm -hmm. small, tight knit community. So, there's a few Jordan travel Jordans out there. <laughs> <laughs> We've been I trying know. to get that trip to Jordan. <laughs> yeah, I know. I still haven't been. Have you been? <laughs> I have been to Jordan. It is yeah. awesome. But I need to go back with all the Jordans. I want to have a Jordan party. <laughs> Jordan next Jordan in Jordan. Exactly. 
Yeah, and what I want to get to in this as well is because like in the last year, really, everyone started talking about TikTok and TikTok's kind of taken off in a much bigger way than it was before. And I think although even in the last month or so, I mean, it's had a huge amount of downloads and loads of people have got into it a lot since the whole world went into lockdown. But you yeah. were on it a bit before that and you were on it back in beginning of January, I think, and you decided to put a lot of time and effort into TikTok. And now within just over four months, you've got a million followers on TikTok. Yeah, I know. It's it's very wild. So basically, I probably downloaded the app in August last year, just because I was like, whatever. And I posted some random stuff, but I probably got to the end of the year just with random uploads. Uh, maybe I had like 15,000 followers. And then January 1st, I said to myself, like, I'm just going to triple down on this app, especially while I was at home because January I was on, on my travel break. I know how lucky am I to get a break from travel. But um, yeah, so I just decided I'll triple down on it and see how it goes. And then four months later, it exponentially just went boom. And I've got a million followers and I'm just like in it. Now, I'm apparently I'm a TikToker now. <laughs> And also, also, I just let, yeah, you said it exponentially went up. So did you like post for quite a while before you noticed anything really start ticking up or how did that work? Yeah, it took, it took a little while. TikTok is very different to the other social media because like it, 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 it's more like Instagram in 2015. Like you can post a photo and it can really get spread. Um, the organic reach is kind of crazy and really, really, it, it's really crazy how much organic reach you can get. So I started posting um, three, three TikToks a day, three videos a day. I said, I'm just going to do three videos a day until I hit a million. I mean, I'm still doing it now, but that was my goal. Like just three a day until I get a million. So I think I ended up about 400 videos deep before I hit a million, but it took one month to get 100,000 followers. So 30 days, 100,000 followers, and then... Even the next month, it was probably about three weeks for the next hundred. So then I had like, it's about two months in, I'm about 250K. So then I'm thinking, dang, I'm going to hit it like in August or something. But then it sort of just kept kept going exponentially. And then within the last three weeks be between that time I hit a million, I actually gained, went from 450K followers to a million in about five weeks. Wow. So I gained that last 500K all within like, the cra I woke up one morning, I went to bed one night and I woke up one morning, he had 80,000 new followers and I was like, oh, this is wild. It's just a few videos. You just need a, it's mm -hmm. all about, um, it's all about having like a lot of, a lot of videos, but then having like key ones that spike. So you'll see a lot of viral videos from people on TikTok that have like 300 followers or a uh, thousand followers, like absolutely nothing. And that's not really that valuable to us because we want to keep those loyals engaged and make sure like people are following you, us for the journey. Not really just like the, oh, that was funny. See you later. Ne see you never again. So mm -hmm. the whole people and people get discouraged, but like, so the whole like, you know, 100 followers a day, like very slow growth isn't actually a bad way to go. And I was fortunate enough that three months in, I started really picking it up. I feel like if I picked it up at the start, I've seen a lot of dead accounts on TikTok from just people going boom at the start, stopping and then plateauing. And they've got like a million followers, but they're getting like no engagement because no one's really engaged. So it's a weird balance between hitting those viral videos, but then all, all, also producing content that aren't going to be seen by the masses, but those loyals will stay around for. So. Mm -hmm. And you said there that you, I mean, you went up 500,000 in, I mean, six weeks, I think you said, and you went up 80,000 yeah. in, in one day. Is that trend still yeah. continuing now? Um, it's not. So that's the thing. It, it, it sort of like gathers with videos, videos will, will sort of pop. And then like that one that I went up 80K in a night, that was a video where I went to sleep. It had it had 50,000 views. I woke up, there was 5 million views in this video. Right. And I was like, whoa, what the heck? And that ended up, I turned it into a trend. Like, it's just one of these videos where it's just like me running around like on cliff edges. So people were interested in that, I guess. So I said, oh, okay, I'll triple <laughs> down on this. So 
I, I realized people are interested in that. So then I started producing more and more and more of that. And then that helped me get there. But um, yeah, it is, it is a very up and down sort of platform in regards to you're not going to be getting like crazy growth all the time. You've got to really sort of consistently um, plant seeds. And then sometimes a video, like two weeks, I had one video, I posted it two weeks ago. It got about 20K views. And at that time, I, that was good for me. I was like, 20,000, that's a lot. And then two weeks later, it just started the, picking up for some reason. And then mm -hmm. uh, two weeks later, again, it had 6 million views. So it's, it's a very sporadic platform. Like I, you, to me, I'm like, oh, well, that video got 20,000 20, 20, views. You know, some people might even delete a video with 20,000 views because it's not good enough for them. And then mm -hmm. if I deleted that video, I just gave up 6, 000, 6 million views like two weeks later. So it's a very, it's a very sketchy platform right now. It's like doo -doo -doo -doo, all over the place. <laughs> Yeah, actually, I, I, you put up a video on your YouTube channel before getting from zero to 100K. And I uh, watched that a, a couple months ago. And then I started dabbling in TikTok myself. And I, I didn't follow through in the end. I, I played around a bit here and there, but then decided to for myself to double down on YouTube rather than spending a lot of my time on TikTok. Because I do think um, that if you try and spread yourself too thin over lots of platforms, then you don't really do any of them well. But I think you've absolutely smashed TikTok now. But what I was going to say is um, within that video there, you did mention that at first you may have been deleting your old TikToks and that's something I was doing, but yeah. that's a big mistake, right? Yeah, I think it is a big mistake. Like unless, unless it you think the content is like really good and it does flop, you can, or you can delete it and repost it and go like, this deserves more because there are certain videos that you're like, this is some crazy stuff. This deserves more than like what it got. And, and then that, in that case, there is the exception, but for the most part, it's all about just creating kind of like YouTube. It's like a weird mix between Instagram and YouTube. Instagram is like 24 hours overnight done where YouTube is like long game. Like you want a video up for a year. So it gets into the search results and people are always searching for it. Mm -hmm. TikTok sits in the middle there. It's like, you want a video up, it, a video is probably live for at least three months, three to four months, slowly just live. And then it will probably die off. But you definitely don't want to delete anything because it's like creating a nice big like sort of TikTok web where you never know who's going to be looking at what at what time. Makes sense. And um, just to follow on from what I was saying, because obviously I decided to uh, concentrate on YouTube for, for myself. But why do you think people should be giving TikTok their attention now over another platform? Yeah, this is what I struggled with. I, this is what my, I'm always struggling with, always struggling with because mm -hmm. I spent all my time on Instagram until about 2018 and I, and I said like, wow, like I really need to diversify. If Instagram's dead, I'm dead in the water. So started YouTube and YouTube for me, I'm on about 20,000, 30,000 subs. It's, it's a good niche community of people that really love me. So it's, it's super valuable in that regard, but it's not huge. And then I was like, okay, I'll go to TikTok and the crazy thing about TikTok is that I am growing. I haven't posted a video on YouTube in a month. I usually post once a week. I haven't posted a video on YouTube in a month and I'm only posting random flashback video photos on Instagram, not really focusing on those platforms. And I am growing um, exponentially on both. Like, like I'm four times, I'm 400% my growth on, my subscription growth on YouTube is 400% up so instead of 500 subs a month, that's what I was getting. I'm now getting 2000 a month. Yeah. And that is without me posting any videos. I'm not posting any videos on YouTube. I haven't even touched the platform. That's just because the only thing I can track it back to is the fact that I have it in my link in description in my TikTok. Same with Instagram. I did, um, I, grow, I've, I struggled to grow last year, probably grew on Instagram 11,000 followers in the whole year. And that was constant posts. This year, I've stripped back completely. I post once every two, three days. And most of them at the moment are just flashback photos. And I've grown 12K. Actually, it's probably more up to more about 20K now in the, in the last four months. Again, from TikTok. I once did a video on TikTok pushing people to my Instagram um, with a bit of a call to action. And I gained 4,000 followers overnight. So for me... The value 
is actually helping out all social media. So don't think it's for everything, but it's definitely like something I want to try on now, if that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, no, it does. It does completely. And like, um, oh. I guess that's an extra bit. Yeah, sorry. It cut out a bit for a second. We're back. Yeah. You can still hear me good? Okay. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, yep. no, I, I mean, that's definitely a big benefit of it that then people will be finding you through TikTok and then it brings people back to your YouTube or back to your Instagram or back to whatever else you're trying to push. Would you say that's the main benefit of it right now or is there's also a way to... Um, monetize yeah. TikTok within TikTok. There's a few different benefits. There is a few different. Yes, yeah, so there's a few different ways I'm benefiting it from right now. One, like, yeah, so the call to action to another platform is huge. I'm still trying to. I, my first goal was to hit the million. So now that I've hit the million, my I'm in that second stage now where I'm trying to. Um, spread those followers and make them more effective on other platforms. So I'm just getting into the call to action stuff right now. I'm not like uh, not hardcore into it, but I expect over the next two months to focus in on that. And my, I hope to like probably double my YouTube subscribers over the next two months from TikTok. But um, in regards to TikTok itself, again, you can do the Same sort of money that I'll be making on those sort of things. So I've diversified, but I, this is the craziest thing about TikTok. I went on live the other night and I just did one hour on live. And people can give, if you don't know, on TikTok, you can give gifts on live. When you're live, people can donate like gifts. And these gifts have a monetary value. So there's different. Um, and I went on live for an hour and people were just donating these gifts. And I was just like, guys, I don't even know what's <laughs> happening right now. And I, in, within, the, within the hour, I got about 300 British pounds. Wow, really? One hour. Oh, yeah. yeah, within one hour on TikTok. And I was like, this is crazy. Like, I could not believe it. So there's definitely instant monetary value in that regard, but... Again, like that was a one-off. I don't expect to get that much money every night, but I have seen, mm -hmm. I have seen other creators on TikTok um, using it in a way like it's it's almost this weird ethical thing because you know you know that they're a younger audience, but I have seen people um, really really um, tr sort of like making people give gifts for like either giveaways or merch or shout outs that sort of thing. And it's been so successful. The last two nights, I've watched this one guy. He does one hour live stream. And each night, he rolls over 3,000 US dollars in the hour wow. from is he... Instagram lives. <laughs> is, he provide... is he doing incentives for that? Like, is it if they pay for a gift, he'll do something? Or how does it work? Yeah, sorry, TikTok lives. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah he does this thing where... Um... It's basically like when someone gives a donation, mm -hmm. their name comes up on the screen and then he says, everyone go follow right. this person. And then he goes into that person's followings list and someone that has recently followed that person, he gives like a big shout out on a video. So for your chance to get a huge shout out, um, you have to be following everyone that's donating. So then all these people that donate get, um, get followers and then someone gets a gets a special shout out on a video and they gain around usually around from this whole hype sort of wheel that he's making they gain around twenty thousand followers so oh, okay so there's there is incentive a lot of people are obviously buying into it but this guy is making like three thousand usd a night just one hour live stream no that, that's interesting that's something i didn't really know about and um I do get what you were saying as well about the ethical side of it, about whether or not you should be taking donations and like gifts from like 13, 14 year old kids. That is the main demographic of TikTok. I, I completely get that. That is something that maybe um, yeah. each person would it wrestle is... with differently. But like, that's interesting to know that there is actually monetization within TikTok right now. Cause I, I didn't really know about that until I saw you post it the other day. Yeah, so that's the thing. So. TikTok takes what's crazy here 
that you give a donation of ten dollars to that um that person so you mm -hmm. can first of all you have to be over 18 over 18 to be able to donate but i don't know a lot of kids find a way around that um and then for every ten dollars you give the 30 33 percent so like and tiktok keeps 66 percent what is that so like every ten dollars the creator gets three dollars thirty and tiktok pockets six dollars sixty which is wow. another thing another thing that is blowing my mind because like yeah. you can either give people are throwing so much money so the other day when i made 300 pounds tiktok made on oh no, tiktok made 600 Wow, like, yeah. Imagine going to your to a shop, buying a gift card for a hundred dollars, and then that value is only worth thirty dollars. That's what's happening, and I don't know. Like, people aren't questioning it, so TikTok's probably loving that. But um, yeah, everyone's sort of tied into the platform, so they have no really other choice. Yeah, I mean, it's like it's their platform, their rules. You know, YouTube, people exactly. complained a few years ago when YouTube did the whole ad apocalypse and all the ad rates were cut by like two thirds. But, you know, their platform, their rules, we're just using it. I know. <laughs> Unfortunately. Exactly. That's exactly. Yeah, exactly. you're at the mercy of the platform. Yeah, and which is why I would also tell people to diversify as much as possible. Um, don't put all your eggs in one basket. Have more than one income stream. Have more than one social media. And then also, if you can, it's not the thing I'm working on, but if you can also build a product and build a website as well, besides that isn't reliant on social media, then that's like a good way of putting your eggs in more than one basket, let's say. Yeah, exactly. That's something that I think I'm constantly learning. <laughs> You know, mm -hmm. like it's, and it's so hard as, as just a single creator, it's actually for me anyway, it's so hard to like choose what to focus on. You know, I've got Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, a podcast, you know, like, it's like, ah, it's like, mm -hmm. what do I, what Yeah, completely. I was say if they if we are cutting up a bit, I don't know, but I think like the internet's being a little bit dodgy at one of our ends. But um, hopefully, you guys are getting the gist of it anyway. And I just want to like um, yeah. come back a little bit as well because that's that's the the sort of end goal. So once you've built a big audience on TikTok, once you've got a big following, then that's something you could do with it, either the live streams or directing people back to your social media. But what about someone that's thinking about joining TikTok right now? Like, what, what, what would you suggest they do? And what would be like the, the aim for a smaller creator or a smaller business to join TikTok? There's still lots of benefit for someone that doesn't have any other platforms to join TikTok because TikTok's like the foot in the door right now. So like if you've tried Instagram or you've tried YouTube, but you just really can't, you can't really get your foot in the door to like open that door up to find like uh, an audience that's going to listen to you. TikTok's a great middle ground where you're guaranteed to get eyes. Mm -hmm. You're guaranteed to get eyes. It's a matter of if they stick around and if they're actually a YouTube video and no one will see it. But on TikTok, you're guaranteed, it's like every video you post, you're always guaranteed at least 100, 200 views. So 200 people probably will see your video. Probably a few videos will go into the thousands. So I, I see TikTok more as this like launch pad of like, if you've been discouraged on other platforms or you feel like you can't really, um, no one's watching you on other platforms, give TikTok a roll and you, don't, you never know, like you might one, blow up for you and it might be super successful too it might just you might not feel so discouraged because um you know you're actually oh wow 300 views oh wow 200 views like you actually you can actually see some growth there um because it's a bit easier and three it is actually i just say keep posting keep posting and then you'll end up finding out one what you love to post about two what works well and three um sort of like You'll, in, you'll see what, what you're enjoying and what content you're enjoying creating, if that makes sense. Yeah, it does, yeah. And um, one thing as well that we haven't touched on because uh, we're both from the travel world. 
And right now, I mean, travel is what I've loved doing for the past five years. Travel is what you love. And right now we're grounded and we're not able to travel. But you've actually built up a TikTok with a million followers within the travel niche as well. So are you finding that people are still interested in searching for travel stuff? Is your travel content still doing well? And how have you done that? Yeah, it's very interesting. So I'll like go back. The whole reason I started TikTok was basically because Gary Vee, if you don't know who Gary Vee is, he's like an entrepreneur. Basically, he's the one that was like saying it for ages, like go TikTok, go TikTok. So when I checked it out, I was like, oh, I'll check it out. And then I realized at the start of this year, I was like, hang on, it's really stamped um, authority in the travel world here, mainly because these kids that are creating this content that are getting famous, they're all 15. None of these kids are traveling. None of these, like, they don't have life experience. They haven't seen the world. So, of course, they're doing dancing and comedy sketches and, and that sort of, like, genre because that's, like, just what they can do in their bedroom. So then I was like, oh, shoot, like, no one's stamped authority on world so i'm just gonna do it right here there was a few people i would say there's about like at least 10 creators that i knew that were on the app and they were doing pretty well but then i just decided like well i can catch up to those creators and then if i really 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 push it i could potentially become the top so that was the goal was just like to sort of like get into that world and do it and then the way that it was being um the way it was being reciprocated in regards to like people seeing travel content um it's just a lot of these people are just like wow like that's the world like that's how i sort of there were there were a few people saying like why are you traveling during corona and obviously i would try and like tell people like this is like a past video but for the most part there's a lot of kids out there that are feeling trapped in school and they're just going dude this jordan kid he's traveling the world have you seen that waterfall did you see that sunset he went to the sahara <laughs> desert I feel like this, these kids are just going like, like, wow, like I want to do that. So it's just really cool. Either that or a lot of people are saying like they're very patriarchal and they're like, you'll post about Canada and then everyone from Canada, like every single kid from Canada will get on that post and be like, thank you for sharing Canada. We love blah, 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 blah. Like they just go off like, thank you so much for showing um, our country to the world. So there's two sides to it that I think um, it well with them and i think this is another really interesting way you did it as well because like uh not all of the countries you've been making videos about are countries you've necessarily been to so far it, i mean instead you've you, you've been able to use stock footage That's and stock footage wanna... sites where like even with, where you weren't able to travel you can still show people different parts of the world by using video clips that are available on the internet yeah, that's the thing. So I started doing this one little thing where I would um, ask people what country they wanted me to visit next in like the highlight, like three things to do in Canada, three things to do in Australia. And then people were starting to, just to, to suggest countries I haven't been to, Latvia, places like that. Like, And I'm like, oh, dang, I know of Latvia. I have seen Latvia, but I've never been there. But so many people are commenting these sort of countries, like you should do this country. And I kept on saying like, hey, I've never been there. Like I can't say anything. But then I realized like, if I do a bit of research, I can see things that I want to do and places I want to go. And then I signed up for 40 bucks a month. You can sign up to this like uh, royalty free video, um, copyright free video site, like video blocks is the one I was using. Um, yeah. So I just signed up to for 40 bucks or for 40 bucks a month. I licensed that I can do anything I want and I can create as many like travel videos basically as I want for 40 bucks a month. So I was like, this is great. And I just went from there and I just changed, changed the format of the videos from three places you must go to three places I want to go. And yeah, it had the same impact and it worked. I, it did what it needed to do. Like that's sort of how I helped growth when I felt like I when now I dial it in more to like my personal brand. So I'm now I'm at the stage where I'm not trying to use the copyright video anymore because I'm not a, like, I'm, I'm not a small creator anymore. I'm a bit more of a bigger creator. So I have to take that in consideration. And I also want to just like 
showing my profile more and more and more. So videos with me in it, me doing things, me like adventuring the world. Mm -hmm. No, I actually, I think that's genius. And also uh, shout out to video blocks. I use that as well, uh, especially like when I'm like searching for a little bit of B-roll from somewhere and I don't necessarily have it. I've just searched on video blocks and you can throw in a piece of drone footage or some nice footage of a city and it just helps the video to flow. It's not that expensive. I mean, really, relatively, for what you used to pay for stock footage, you could pay like a hundred, two hundred dollars just for a single clip. And then story blocks, video blocks give you this subscription where you can use unlimited amount of footage for all of your video projects. So I think that's yeah. a really smart way of going about it. And like, especially right now, where no one can go out and travel. Put your own personality and put your own spin into it, and that might be a good option to be able to get video content from wherever you're thinking about making a video about. Yeah, yeah man. Exactly. No, I think so, that's yeah. yeah, yeah, really smart. It's really not too expensive, like forty bucks a month, or if you want to commit to the year, you get like two hundred bucks a year if you want to commit to the whole year. So mm -hmm. I was thinking, like, I was thinking, am I gonna really like? Like, will I, will I really be holding on to this $100, $200 over the potential of um, what I could be making with TikTok? I mean, TikTok's already paid it back with one live stream. So mm -hmm. it's good, but yeah. And you, I, I saw I saw on your Instagram a couple of days ago that you were doing the screen time challenge and you put it out there. Do you find, yeah. <laughs> do you find that you're spending more time on TikTok now you're using it? Are you also consuming it a lot more or are you spending a lot of time yeah, on yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> so it it's probably addictive, right? <laughs> super addictive, super addictive. I can slightly justify um, being on it. Not as much as I am because I'm on it way too much. <laughs> and like, I, I, I have a serious issue. But especially when I'm not traveling, like it's just like instead of hiking a mountain, I'll just scroll TikTok. <laughs> But I can justify a little bit of it because part of TikTok is understanding the culture of the app. It's like a, the app is like a big inside joke. It's like a massive inside joke, but only people on TikTok understand the joke. That's another thing that is so unique about this app. Like there are so many like hand signals or like words or just like different types of comments or different sort of um, trends that are happening that have no no one outside of tiktok will even understand but it's like a massive inside joke and everyone on in tiktok is in on the joke so you have to actually to be success to be like that next level of success i feel like you do have to consume a little bit just to understand the culture of what, the mindset of where everyone's coming from but not as much as i've been on <laughs> let's just put it that I do agree with you though, because I think once you get into TikTok, you start noticing like the recurring music, the like the different sounds that's um, being played, and then understanding how they link to what's what's in the video, and understanding like that part of it. You definitely need that. Yeah, and there's trends, there's new trends every single week. So the difference between you doing the trend in a month time or you doing a trend within the second or third day can be huge in regards to um, exposure because people are like, you're either a front runner or you just like pull it in at the end. So yeah, I found that the earlier I've been to trends or trends that I've made myself that have done well, um, it's always just been a lot better than that I've jumped on early. And one thing I would say as well, because this is how I've explained being on TikTok to someone else before, is that someone said to me, well, what's the point in being in front of a bunch of 13, 14 year olds? That's not going to make you any money. And OK, well, fine. If you think about it exclusively like that, then obviously that's very short term thinking. And you're probably not going to be making money anyway, because you're seeing everyone as a customer and that, that's not the way it should be. But yeah, yeah, what, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but what you can do and think about it this way instead, even if you're thinking about it like that, is well, if you're if you've got a million followers now on TikTok, and let's say not all of them are, but let's say the a, a million 13 year olds right now, they know you, they're gonna follow you. If you go and do something else after this and you go and you've already built a large following that will know you in five years time, seven years time, that you can be an authority in whatever you wanna speak about. Yeah, exactly, that's the thing. Like 13, 14, 15 year olds, in four or five years, these kids are gonna be 
graduated, wanting to travel the world or wanting to do something with their life. And um, yeah, you're going to be there. You're going to be the person that's there. They're going to trust the most because they've been with you for five years. So there is that long-term goal, but what else? People always say that, oh, but they're only 13. So Mm -hmm. there's no point. They have no money. And I'm like, well, yeah, again, I always say the thing like, first of all, if you're just doing it for money, don't get involved in social media. Trust me, it's like way harder. <laughs> what are easier ways to make money? But um, one thing that's funny is that like the people that are, have become mass success, like the David Dobricks, the Logan Pauls of the YouTube world, their audience is 13, 14, 15. And I think they make millions of dollars from their merch alone. Mm-hmm. So... Although these kids may not have money in regards to like, here, I'll give you my exact money. Like it only takes one mom to get them one birthday present, which happens to be that, that sweatshirt that David Dobrik sells. You know what I mean? Like, so it's, it's weird because I feel like they don't have money, but then at the same time, they're probably the most valuable sort of audience to sort of like have. Mm -hmm. It's a weird juxtaposition. Yeah, definitely. And I think it is it's sort of the wrong, wrong way around of thinking about it anyway. If um yeah, like definitely. if you could build if you could build a, a following and build an audience or whatever, like don't go into it because of the monetization side of it. Go into it because you 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 want to share something and because you enjoy it, and then that'll come later on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, in the end, if if you are doing it just doing if you are doing anything just for money and you don't actually enjoy it, the process, it's, you're not going to really be as successful as you possibly could be if you're doing something that you love. So I think that actually comes down to as well. Like I actually really love TikTok. Like mm-hmm. I love, I love the app. Obviously I spend so much time on it, but I genuinely like enjoy making these videos. And I genuinely like think like in the day when I'm doing other things, I'm thinking like, oh, that would be funny or that would be cool or maybe I should do a twist on this. Like I, my mind is so wrapped around like almost obsessive about like this app because I just like really love it. So <laughs> yeah, it definitely helps when you love it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's, um, well, I mean, it's the same, same for me on YouTube. Like even if I wasn't, especially with making travel videos, even like um, if I wasn't making any from it, I'll still make those videos because it's, it's fun and it's something you can watch back in five, 10, 20 years time and think, oh yeah, cool. I did that great thing. That was, that was Yeah, I, that's all right. Like same with, for me, YouTube, I posted like 200 videos on YouTube and from a YouTube perspective, I haven't really had like success, but in the end of the day, I just love, like, I love posting all my vlogs on YouTube and I love that like, like some of them get like a thousand views, like absolutely nothing in the grand scheme of things, but I love just documenting all my travels and like, I don't know, like there's all these inside jokes between me and my friends that I'm just putting into these videos that aren't really going to be like very good for an audience to watch, but I don't know. I just enjoy it. That's what I wanted to do. So that's what I'm going to do. (laughs) Absolutely. And uh, so to wrap it up now, where can people find you? Um, Obviously on TikTok is Jordan to Ali. And is that the yes. same everywhere? And where else can people go and find you? Yeah, everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. So you can go YouTube, <laughs> Jordan Tuelli, Instagram, Jordan Tuelli, Facebook, Jordan Tuelli, or TikTok, Jordan Tuelli. And I even have a podcast. It's actually not called Jordan Tuelli. If you have 15 minutes to spare once a week, you can go to my podcast called A Waste of Time. And it's a great waste of time. What can I say? <laughs> it's definitely, <laughs> you're, not, you're definitely not going to learn. If you want to learn things, listen to Jordan, this Jordan, you know, (laughs) but if you want to completely like waste your time and be brain dead at the end of it, I got some good content for you. (laughs) Well, I think we all need some of that anyway, right now. There's there's lots of time to waste. So (laughs) yeah, go go and check it out while we do have time. Exactly. (laughs) And uh, yeah, Yeah, exactly. That's right. Well, I'm going to wrap it up there. Thank you hugely, Jordan, for joining. Sorry if there were any technical issues on the side of watching it. I, I think like, I don't know, you know how it is. If any of you tried Zoom right now, yeah. it is going in and out, but hopefully you still got what we were saying. And yeah, thank you for watching. I'm going to continue doing more of these. Let us know in the comments what you 